So a lot, of, a lot has changed since uh, last Ignite, a year ago in Anaheim, California. Um, let's see, we, we, we hired a new CEO, a new president, uh, came out with two new brands, Prisma and Cortex, uh, acquired, well, only four companies, I guess, uh, right? Redlock, uh, the Misto, and then two companies on the same day, uh, Twistlock and PureSec. Um, on a personal note, just as my son, my little son out of five, turned uh, 18 months and I thought I'd be able to start sleeping at night, I, uh, the, the CISO of Palo Alto Networks, Lucas Moody, has started working for me. Uh, there goes my sleep. So, so a few changes and, you know, those changes sometimes make you feel that uh, we are insane and what are these guys doing? And, and this is not how I feel. This is my, how you might think that I feel. I don't feel insane. And actually, we're doing all of that mostly to keep you sane. And, and this presentation uh, will focus on explaining why do we do all of that and how that's going to keep you sane uh, looking into the future, okay? So, you know, maybe, maybe put um, our acquisitions in some perspective. We've talked about it in the past. Our strategy is to put sensors or to put agents or to send our tentacles to different areas of the infrastructure, to the network through the firewall, right? Physical networks, virtual networks, to the endpoint. That was the Severa acquisition. To uh, SaaS applications via CASB, that was the zero secure acquisition. Into public cloud through Evident and Redlock. Into containers now through Twistlock. Into serverless functions through PureSec and so on. And once we send our tentacles there, and then, then we, can, we can turn into a model, and you've seen this slide last year, where services can be provided from the cloud. Now, those different things, they have their own functions, like firewalls do specific things, such as access control, um, endpoints do EPP, endpoint protection, and so on. So those different agents, they have their own unique task that they perform, but to me, the most important thing that they do is they allow us to then take all the cloud-delivered services, like wildfire and, and XDR and other things, and apply them across the entire infrastructure, and that allows us to focus on outcomes. Rather than focusing on what's the next technology that I need to buy, we focus on outcomes. Outcomes become SaaS services, uh, so, so you can get visibility across the entire infrastructure and prevention across the entire infrastructure and detection and response for what cannot be prevented across the entire infrastructure and so on. And so, so a lot of the acquisitions that we've made in the past and a lot of the acquisitions that we've done in the last year are around that, are around our being able to add all these different locations into, into the, the platform, okay? And then I get more and more the question of, so what is the role of the firewall in all of this? Because there are some endpoint vendors out there and potentially other vendors that think that they can do everything and they try to convince Wall Street, especially as they try to go public with uh, huge losses that the firewall is dead and they're going to do everything and nobody needs a firewall on premise and nobody needs a firewall in the cloud and nobody needs firewalls in data centers and so on. And, and I, first, I think that's wrong. First, it has to be wrong because I still have five kids to send to college and, and I need to sell firewalls. And, and a lot of you have made your careers around firewalls and you have kids to send to college probably. But, but look, the reality is that Yes, maybe there are some things you can do on the endpoints that today the firewall does, but first, you'll have to be on all endpoints, and that includes routers and switches and printers and scanners and, and everything that's connected to the network, so IOTs, and, and, and whether these IOTs are industrial IOTs or, or cars or medical devices or refrigerators or video cameras that we're all putting in our offices right now and so on. And it's probably not very feasible that you're going to be able to run software in all these different locations, and even if you could, in order to do what the firewall does, you'll have to start collecting a lot of network traffic from those agents in order to do things like look for command and control connections, in order to uh, do what we do with the DNS service and, and a few other things. And could you do it? Maybe. It's just, it's not very practical and it's going to cost much more to do it like that than try to do everything through an aggregated uh, point, which is the firewall. So I think that the most practical uh, way forward in securing both infrastructure and, and the cloud is to run traffic through a firewall. 
essentially creating a perimeter. The perimeter is not dead, the perimeter is changing. Okay, so yeah, maybe we're not going to deploy a physical firewall on premise. Maybe the firewall is going to be delivered from the cloud, like is the case with Prisma Access. I know there are vendors that think that they're going to do it with proxies. This is going to be the third time I kill proxies. Uh, there are like, no, it's like, look, in the, in the mid 90s, stateful inspection killed the first generation of proxies that try to do security, right? If you remember secure computing and, and trusted information systems with Gauntlet and, and Raptor and, and a few other proxies, they're all gone. And then came the second generation of proxies, the, the blue coats and the, uh, the web sensors of the world that Palo Alto networks with the next generation firewall killed. And, but you know, proxies are like, you know, whatever, like cockroaches, right? They, they keep coming back and, <laughs> and you have to do it again and again, but that's okay. Um, look, proxies are not a solution to anything. And, and, and I think that you will see more and more delivery of secure, network security services uh, from the cloud with things like Prisma Access. And, and it's, it's, it's going to start with small offices and, and remote users, and it's going to extend to all users and bigger and bigger offices. And we'll see. We'll see what will make sense for you uh, and what will make sense for, for us in terms of uh, uh, where we're going to use physical firewalls, where we're going to use firewalls delivered from the cloud. And then, very separate from that, there is also the question of what is the role of the firewall in the cloud, right? So is there a firewall in the cloud? Do we need a firewall in the cloud? What is the firewall in the cloud going to do? And, and to me, the answer to that is somewhat similar to what I said before. Yeah, you might be able to do things by running only on endpoints. So in the cloud, it will be running inside VMs, running in containers, either the host that hosts the containers or the containers themselves, and doing things with serverless functions and so on but it's just going to be very, very inefficient not to look at the traffic coming out of them, but rather trying to extract all the traffic from all those different things and bring the, the packets into a central storage location and do work there. It just, it, it just doesn't make sense. I also think that the role of the firewall is going to increase in the public cloud versus on-premise, and that's mostly due to the change in, in applications and the way cloud-native applications work versus on-premise applications. As an example, we used to manage our endpoint agent traps with a product called ESM, Endpoint Security Manager, an on-premise solution that was very simple to firewall. You didn't have to really open anything besides uh, um, one, one port going into, into Palo Alto Networks for updates. Whereas once we moved to TSM, the cloud delivered, uh, the public cloud delivered uh, uh, traps, trap management system, TMS, uh, all of a sudden, it needs to communicate with two, three different data centers, our own data centers, other clouds, because we have things running in, in different clouds. It needs to communicate with our IT infrastructure, because that's where we authenticate our customers when they log in. And all of a sudden, the connectivity that's required from applications has become much more compared to when they were running on-premise. And that connectivity, I think, the best way to deal with that connectivity requirement is through firewalls in the public cloud. And, and even if you could avoid putting a firewall in a private data center by blocking all outbound traffic and only allowing port 80 and 443 in through a load balancer or something like that, I don't think there's an option like that in the public cloud. So we're going to see more and more firewalls, we, we call our version VM series, deployed in, in the public cloud. And, and, and speaking of public cloud and speaking of the move to, to the cloud, uh, after speaking to a lot of customers, probably hundreds of customers in the last uh, year or two, uh, I'm, I, I've reached the conclusion that really the, the challenge that security people, security professionals have moved with the move to the cloud is around one thing, and that thing is uncertainty. I think that uh, it, it all boils down to not having full control and full certainty as to what your users are able to do with the cloud. And, and what I mean by that is prevention is going to be prevention, meaning that the, way, the way we deal with the adversaries, the way we deal with the bad people out there is through prevention. We're going to detect them in the cloud, however we do that, and, and we're going to stop them. But the way we're going to do, deal with users is, or the way we deal with users is very different. On premise, you always have the stick, right? You always have this firewall in front of everyone, and if they don't do what you want them to do, you can stop them. 
by blocking them in the firewall and you can control their endpoints because you control the servers and so on. And in the cloud, that doesn't exist. In the cloud, if you try to go to your developers and to your cloud users and tell them every, all the traffic has to go through me so I can control you and I'm going to tell you what you're going to connect to and what you're, going to, not, you're going to con what you're not going to connect to, probably not going to work. They're not going to like it. They're going to go around you. Anyone with a credit card today can do whatever they want in the cloud and then expense it to the company. So I think that we will have to learn to deal with uncertainty. We'll have to learn to, learn to deal with not having complete control over what our users are doing. And if you look at, the, at Prisma, if you look at the, the Palo Alto Networks products and, and services that we have for securing the move to both SaaS and, and the public cloud, Many of them are more around monitoring what users do and then creating a process for remediating issues versus trying to control in advance what is it that they can do and what is it that they cannot do. And that requires a big shift in mindset. And, and I really hope that we can all go through that shift because otherwise our users will do whatever they want. Okay, so the way to work with these applications and when you look at the services that we provide, always think about what we are about, we're not in full control. We are monitoring, we're there to monitor what users are doing, look for things that they are doing. So we're not going to prevent them from being able to share things with the world, but when they do share from cloud storage or whatever, we're going to look at that and make sure that it's okay and maybe stop it after the fact as quickly as possible versus having a rule, if you wanna share something, you come to me, which is effectively what's happening on, on premise, okay, in, in your own data centers. On the other hand, I think that the cloud offers an opportunity to be more secure, okay? So I think the cloud, both private cloud and public cloud, offer the opportunity to have much better security than we have in traditional data centers. And there are many reasons for that. I wanna talk about two. The first two is what we call, sorry, the first two is what we call shift left. Shift left is the ability to apply security at a much earlier stage of the, 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 the process of the development and deployment process. And the reason for that is that the way we work with cloud, both private and public, is much more structured. We work as engineers is much more structured. And, and the reason it's much more structured is because we do something called continuous integration and continuous development, where you don't just have a bunch of engineers build code and then Six months later, you have two months where you integrate everything, and then you have a month where you test, or two months where you test everything, and then you deploy. It's a continuous process. It's a continuous process of integration of code and deployment of code. That's called CI, CD. And that structure allows us to start doing tests much earlier in the cycle, and, and not just at runtime. So for example, we can look for vulnerabilities in the code whether they're in the code itself or in packages that the code uses, at the time, they're, even before anything runs uh, in, in the public cloud. We can do it at a much earlier stage. We can look at the code at a much earlier stage to see if the code is going to violate our policy. You know, if we have a policy of you're not allowed to access X, Y, or Z, you can see it at a much earlier stage and you don't have to wait for runtime when the code runs and tries to access X, Y, and Z. This is not something we could have done in the past. This is something we can do today. Also, if you look at vulnerability management, I think that shift left and the ability to do vulnerability management much earlier in the cycle brings an opportunity for vulnerability management to be much, much better. And what I mean by that is because we are connecting runtime and what we see running in runtime, together with securing the deployment time um, where, or, or even the build time where, where we can find the vulnerabilities, we can know which vulnerabilities are relevant or not. If we see a vulnerability at, at build time uh, or in, in a package that we know is not going to run because we're also there at runtime and we can see what's running, then maybe it's a lower priority and you don't necessarily have to fix that vulnerability. So vulnerability management becomes much, much easier when you deploy in the cloud. And um, one, one more comment about shift left. Being able to do all those things at a much earlier stage doesn't mean that we can avoid doing things at runtime. At the end of the day, the attacks are going to happen in runtime, and only in runtime we can see what the attackers are doing and, and the effect of that. And yeah, we can catch a lot of the vulnerabilities and a lot of other issues early on 
but if we're not there at runtime, if we don't collect data at runtime, look at the data, find the attacks, and respond to the data, we're not going to be able to protect public clouds, loads, containers, VMs, serverless, and, and so on. Okay, so that's the first opportunity we have. The second opportunity we have is, I don't know why my slide is not coming up, but that's, that's okay. Keep it here, okay. The second opportunity we have is, I don't know how to say it in a nice way, uh, not in a raw way. Uh, I think that the first opportunity we have, the second opportunity we have is not to screw up cloud security. That's the most extreme word marketing allowed me to use. Uh, not, not to screw up cloud security like we screwed up enterprise security. And, and this is, this is uh, what we used to depict, I think it was network security or enterprise security in 2014, right? You take a bunch of other components and, and you try to integrate 20 different vendors into one thing and, and call it enterprise security. And then in 2015 at Ignite, we use this. And in 2016, we use this. And in 2017, we use this. And then in 2018, we use this. And every year we try to use something different and the enterprise security is still screwed up and it's probably going to continue to be screwed up, meaning you're going to continue to use dozens of vendors to secure enterprises, okay? I think that the cloud presents an opportunity. Uh, there are forces against it. If you look at the list of all the vendors that are trying to sell, I mean, the, you cloud solutions, there are a lot of them. And like with enterprise security, each of them tries to find a little niche and, and secure that niche. So maybe they'll secure uh, containers, but not runtime. Uh, they, they think that another vendor needs to secure it in runtime. Um, and then they'll refer you to other vendors if you want to secure VMs. And other vendors will secure PaaS services and IS services, and you'll buy your firewall from event. It's, it's, the industry is really, really trying hard to screw it again. And, and I think we have an opportunity not to screw it again. I think we have an opportunity to create a suite of products that work together and services that work together and, and deliver on, you've seen this slide, deliver on an architecture where, where everything is already integrated, is already working together, and, and what's important to our customers, of course, is that it all has to be best of breed, right? Palo Alto Network customers buy best of breed. Those that buy, they good enough. They go to other vendor conferences. Um, you, you're here, so you're buying best of breed. So, so it's our job to make sure that those different components are best of breed, and some of them are being developed internally. We think we have by far the best virtual firewall. We have by far the best endpoint security. We acquired the best um, um, serverless security company and the best um, um, <clears throat> container security company, and, and, and of course, the, the two best past security companies, Redlock and Evident. And, and we'll continue to build best of breed, and we'll continue to buy best of breed, and, and package everything into one suite of products that are pre-integrated, that work together, and that can help you in the move to the cloud without screwing it up again, like we've all done in, in enterprise security. And we call all of that Prisma, right? This is what Prisma is, is about. So to further uh, make it clear what it means to move to the cloud and how you use Prisma and its components to move to the cloud, I thought that it would be best to um, have a few customers, few of our customers, come on stage and describe their challenges and their move to the cloud. And to facilitate this, I thought it would be best to call a person that used to run one of the largest SaaS providers in the world, used to run one of the three big public cloud providers in the world, and is now the amazing president of Palo Alto Networks, Amit Singh. 